destruction follows pride. Before I get into this message, I believe we should go ahead and just start off with a prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I titled this message, Destruction Follows Pride. And yes, I was intentional with uh, when on, with the date that this message would be released, which is June 1st. And this is probably going to turn into two or three parts. But... As we all know today, at least at the time that I'm delivering this message, it may not be at the time that you're watching this, but at the time I am delivering today is June 1st of 2023, which marks the first day of Pride Month this year. Pride Month in the U.S. at least, in the United States of America. And my heart, my spirit breaks when it's it, it, it gets sad when I hear that we celebrate Pride, when we have a month, when we have a celebration, we dedicate 30 days for a sin that God clearly states is an abomination, for a sin that God clearly states that he hates. His word tells us that destruction follows pride. It is only a matter of time when any nation or any man who is prideful will fall. So many people today, we we disguise pride with so many words such as love and sexual identity and I know who I am and all of these things that people use just to just to cover up pride. Satan has this nation, Satan has the land warped into thinking that pride is okay. I should say the people of this nation who are not believers or who may be lukewarm or who may think that, oh, it's okay, that's a sin. You know, that's okay for people to love who they want. People know who they are from the womb. No, God created you who he has called you to be. If he created you as a male and you were born as a male, that's who he called you to be. If you if he created you a female and you were born as a female, that's who he called you to be. God makes no mistakes. God is not confused. But in this month, in this time, in this generation, I hear so many wicked and evil things from so many organizations, from so many TV shows and movies and even some of these restaurants. Everybody is giving in. They're bowing down to pride. They're doing exactly what Satan wants them to do. And ladies and gentlemen, it is a dangerous place. My heart breaks for this nation. My heart breaks for the people who celebrate such a thing. And now we have Christians saying, you know what? Let's just be accepting of it. Jesus has called us to love to, to love these people. Jesus has, has called us to love those of the alphabet community. So many letters now, I won't even go into all of them. People has called us or Jesus has called us. To love them. And even if that means we have to love them while they live in their sin, then we're going to love them. But ladies and gentlemen, that is how Satan wants to deceive you. He will deceive you into thinking that loving them makes is, is, is encouraging them, is, is accepting their way of living. No, loving a person is correcting them when they are wrong. Loving a person is telling them when they are in sin. God does not support pride. God does not encourage pride. God does not love pride. God hates pride. And as I share the scriptures today, you will see that it is in his word. He makes it clear that he hates pride. So many organizations today are starting their pride campaigns. They've probably already begun this year. They don't just simply do it for the month of June. They do it throughout the whole year to show this the alphabet community, that they do support them, that they do encourage them to live who they believe they are. A few companies mentioned that I have noted down here today is Ford, Nike, Adidas, Target, and Bud Light. 
Now, am I saying if you shop from such companies, you are a wicked and evil person? No. Am I saying that if you if you get shoes from Nike or if you buy a truck from Ford or if you get shoes or clothes from Adidas, if you go grocery shopping or you need things for the household at Target, am I saying that you are wicked and evil? No. If you have a sip of Bud Light, am I saying you're going to hell? No. But what I am saying is we must pay very close attention because do you see how these companies are giving into this pride campaign? Do you see how these organizations, even some churches, they're giving into these false ideologies. They're giving into these ways that God says this is evil. This is wicked. God destroyed two cities because of pride, because of their wickedness. He destroyed them. Fire rained down from the earth, which we will discuss later on. But when you see these companies, when you see these organizations, when you see the leaders in this land, when you see our nation, they begin to put up a pride flag, which we will talk about later. When they begin to, to, to just talk about pride and talk about loving who you want, being who you want to be, identifying as you want to identify, ladies and gentlemen, we are going backwards and we are going down. When I say we, I mean the nation. The nation is headed to hell. The nation is headed to hell. People don't want to hear these type of messages. People don't want to listen to this type of teaching, which is okay, but I'm going to be obedient to deliver the word that God has called me to deliver. I'm going to be obedient. I'm going to obey God, and I'm going to tell you the truth. The United States of America, if it does not repent, if its leaders does not repent, if its lawmakers does not repent, if, if Congress does not repent, if we continue to go down the path that we are going down, Ladies and gentlemen, the United States will soon be destroyed. You will soon be destroyed. And I'm only warning you. I'm one of the many voices who are warning people today. We here in the United States, the people here in the United States must repent. They must repent. Companies disguise their support for pride behind three words. That's right, three words. Those three words are diversity, equity, and inclusion. Diversity, equity, and inclusion. Now, Satan makes people think that this is about race, that this is about gender, that this is about um, money or equal pay. No, 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 no. Diversity, equity, and inclusion is a cover-up for a company supporting Pride, a company supporting those who identify as other than male or female or other than their own gender. I told my wife the other day, you know, if you take those three words and if you say diversity, inclusion and equity and you take the first letter of each of those three words, which would be D.I.E. It spells die. Diversity, diversity, inclusion, and equity spells die. There are people dying in this cover-up of diversity, equity, and inclusion. There are people, there are companies dying in this cover-up of diversity, equity, and inclusion. People are dying. Companies are being destroyed. The United States is slowly deteriorating because they are dying as a result of being in pride. My first scripture that I want to share with you all today is Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18, which says pride goes before destruction and haughtiness before a fall. What does this mean? Exactly what it says. Most of the scriptures I'm going to share with you all today, it's pretty straightforward. Pride goes before destruction. Anytime you see pride in a man, anytime you see pride in a woman, anytime you see pride in an organization, anytime you see pride in a kingdom or in a nation, in a state or in a land, ladies and gentlemen, it is only a matter of time before it is destroyed. The word pride also means, it could also mean arrogance, swelling, or to be high. When a nation is prideful, when its people are prideful, they are arrogant. They think that they are better than other nations. They think they are better than other people. God hates that. 
When a nation is prideful, it is swelling, it is swollen on its own good, swollen on its own money. And ladies and gentlemen, we all know that any time your, your body is swollen, that is a sign that there is something going on in the blood. When something is swollen on your body, whether it's in your hands, in your feet, or in your ankle, that means there's a sign that there is something wrong in your body. Whether there's an infection, whether there's blood pooling, pooling in one area in your body, it is never a good sign. Swell Swelling is not good. Swelling means something is wrong. So when we hear about pride in this nation, ladies and gentlemen, it is it is a sign that we are swelling. It is a sign that we may be we have an internal bleed, that there is an area that is bleeding out in our body. And if we do not pay attention to that bleed now, we will bleed out and die. Pride goes before destruction you want to look at places that's been destroyed more than likely they were prideful you read about kings you read about empires from the ancient days and you see how they have fallen more than likely they were prideful when you read about babylon when you read about ba the, the the babel when they were building the tower of babel when you read when you read, if you watch any documentaries over the Roman Empire and how it was one of the greatest empires in history, but also how it fell. Ladies and gentlemen, you will see that these nations, they were prideful. And it's, it's, it's consistent in history. It's consistent in the Bible. You see kings who fail as a result of pride. Pride. You see kingdoms and nations that have fallen as a result of pride. This is something that is consistent. When a nation, when a land, when its people become prideful, it is only a matter of time before it is destroyed. How soon? I don't know. The destruction can take place this year. The destruction can take place over a period of time. The destruction can take place in the blink of an eye. How quick, how fast, how slow, how timely, I don't know. But one thing I do know that is, is that when a nation and when, when its people are prideful, it is only a matter of time before it is destroyed. Because pride always goes before destruction. I want to read Proverbs chapter 29 verse 23. And it says, pride ends in humiliation. While humility, while humility brings honor. Pride ends in humiliation while humility brings honor. When a nation is prideful, it will end in humiliation. The world will say, wow, we remember when that nation was once great. We remember when that nation was the go-to nation. We, we remember when that nation was the center of the world. We remember when so many nations, when other nations all around the world traded with that nation, when people looked to that nation, when people wanted to have a life in that nation, when people wanted to grow in that nation, when other nations tried to try to learn from this nation. Wow, we remember when that was such a thing. But because that nation became prideful. Now we look at this nation and we say, whoa, what has happened? Woe unto this nation. Nobody looks up to this nation anymore. Nobody wants, nobody aspires to, to truly live here as they used to anymore. We are not the center of the world anymore. Ladies and gentlemen, pride ends in humiliation. Listen, 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 listen to me. If you're a CEO watching this today, if you're a business exec executive watching this today, if you're a church watching this today and you celebrate pride, you approve pride, you encourage pride. It will all end in, in humiliation. And you may say, well, our numbers are doing better than ever. You may say we have we've made more money this year than we have in the past 20 years. We have more members than we that today than we had 10 years ago. But let me tell you something. You may think in the flesh you are doing good, but in the spiritual realm, you are dying. You are dead and you will go before God. And he will say, do you think just because of your money that I'm going to let you into my kingdom? Do you think just because of your fame that I'm going to let you into my kingdom? Do you think because of the number of 
of members you have in your organization. Now I'm going to let you into my kingdom. You have you, you have humiliated yourself because of your pride. Pride ends in humiliation. Pride ends in humiliation. But those who are humble, those kingdoms that have humility, now that brings honor. Honor follows humility. And we live in a time where so many people think, oh, if I act better than, if I think of myself as superior, I will attract a certain crowd to me. I will attract more money to me. I will attract different opportunities to me. No, 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 no. You will. You only attract humiliation in your pride. But when you are humble, when you think of others as better than yourself, no, 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 you bring honor. You bring honor. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 2 says, Pride leads to disgrace, but with humility comes wisdom. So far, all the scriptures I've shared with you, you've seen nothing good come out of pride. You've only seen evil. You've only seen a bad outcome. You've only seen the cons because there is not one pro of pride. Not one. Only cons follow pride. Pride leads to disgrace. But with humility comes wisdom. I want to remember I told you all that there were kings who who had a downfall because of their pride. And when you go to Second Chronicles chapter 26, verse 16, you will see this is when King Uzziah became proud and it led to to his downfall this was at basically when king uzziah if you want to say was in the prime of his kingdom if you want to say he was in the prime of being a leader but even in this prime king uzziah became prideful he saw the army that he had he saw the gold that he had he saw he saw all the land that he owned he saw all of this and he thought of himself better than he thought he no longer needed god he thought that he could do things all by himself all because he was looking at the flesh and he saw what he what he had physically and he said, oh, why do I need God? Why do I need to lean on him? I myself, I by myself am powerful. By myself, I can do all things. He became prideful and the Bible tells us that when he became proud, that was the beginning of his downfall. When you become proud, it is the beginning of your downfall. Here it is, King Uzziah. He was prosperous. And I love what the Christian commentator George Morgan says. Prosperity always puts the soul in danger of pride. Everybody today wants to be prosperous. Nothing wrong with wanting to be prosperous. God's word speaks on prosperity. So you will not ever hear me speak against prospering. But when you prosper, you have to be very careful that you do not fall into the temptation of pride. Because when you have more money, when you have a bigger home, when you drive a nicer car, when you have nicer clothes, your flesh will be tempted to think that it is better than other people. Your mind will be tempted to think that, oh, because I have these things and this person doesn't, well, I am better than them. No, no, and no. Prosperity puts your soul in danger of pride. That's why you better keep yourself in check. You better ask God to keep you humble. Even if you're making a million dollars, you better ask God to keep you humble. Because the moment you think of yourself better than, the moment you think of yourself above others, the moment you think because you have more money in the bank account, you become prideful and your soul is in danger. God doesn't trust everybody with the same level of success. God does not trust everybody with the same level of success. I know this is a contrary thing, and this is something that so many people don't like to hear today because everybody wants to hear that they're going to be a millionaire. Everybody wants to hear that they're going to be a CEO or a vice president. Everybody wants to hear that all of their debt is going to be paid off. Everybody wants to hear all of these good things, but the truth of the matter is, is that everybody won't have the same level of success. It's true because Jesus even said, the poor you will always have with you. You will always have the poor with you. And the truth of the matter is, is that 
God doesn't trust everybody with a million dollars. God may not trust you with a billion dollars. God may not trust you with $500,000 because if he can't even trust you, if you struggle, um, if you struggle maintaining the 50,000, if you struggle maintaining the 40,000, if you struggle maintaining the 70,000 and you're asking God, Lord, I want a million. He's saying you can't even maintain what I've already given you. You have a hard time maintaining this. You've become prideful in the little that I've already given you. You already think of yourself better than. You already look down on others. You look down on your family members. So how dare you ask me for a million dollars? How dare you ask me to make you a multimillionaire when you can't even remain humble in the little that I've already given you? God may not trust you with what he's trusted with somebody else. It doesn't mean he loves you any less. And it doesn't mean he loves them any more. But what he's doing is he's protecting you. And just as King Uzziah, as pride led to his downfall, pride also led to King Solomon's downfall. Now, many people know that King Solomon was the wisest man in the Bible after Jesus, clearly. The wisest man to ever live. But what happened? Solomon had all this gold. Solomon built the most beautiful temple to ever be built. Solomon had everything and had all this wisdom and leaders from so many nations. Even the queen from Ethiopia came and they were so amazed by his wisdom. And one thing that God told Solomon to stay away from is the women of other nations because they would draw Solomon away. They would turn his heart away from God. But what did Solomon do in his pride? Solomon thought, I'm not going to turn away from God. I can mess with these other women. Look at how beautiful they are. Look at how, how accessible they are. Oh, they're so beautiful. Why, why wouldn't I marry this woman? Why wouldn't I have this concubine? Why wouldn't I do this? Or why wouldn't I do that? And what happens? Solomon's story ends in really a sad way. A lot of people don't know it. But if you read your Bible, you'll see that Solomon actually, his story ended with his heart being turned away from God as a result of him marrying the very women that God told him to stay away from. He built temples for these women, up for their false gods. And as a result, there were people later on who worshiped these false gods. All because Solomon, in his pride, he thought, I'm the wisest man to live. God has given me this wisdom. Surely I won't fall away. But I'm going to marry who I want to marry. I'm going to do who I want to do. I can't help who I'm attracted to. I can't help who I love. Who does that sound like today? What does that sound like today? Pride also led to Solomon's downfall. Proverbs chapter 16 verse 5 says, The Lord detests the proud. They will surely be punished. If you are someone who is prideful, if you are someone who lives in pride, if you are someone who approves of pride, who supports pride, ladies and gentlemen, God detests you, which means God opposes you. He resists you. And you will be punished. If you do not repent today. If you do not turn away from your prideful ways. If you do not give your life to God. If you do not surrender to God. You will be punished. And right now everything in your life may look well. Everything in your life may look just fine. Everything in your life. May appear to be okay. You may say, well, I have the money here. I got this promotion here. I have my own business. All seems well. I'm healthy. I'm wealthy. But if you are prideful, your soul will be punished. Your soul will spend an eternity in torment. Proverbs 16, 19 says, and I love this scripture here. I was looking forward to getting to this scripture. Proverbs chapter 16, 19 says, better to live humbly with the poor than to share plunder 
with the proud. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What is the scripture saying here? You mean to tell me that the Bible that Solomon himself wrote, better to live humbly with the poor than to share plunder with the proud? Because if God already opposes the proud, if he resisted, if he resists the proud, then ladies and gentlemen, why would you want to sit with those who are prideful? Why would you want to sit with those who are proud? Why would you want to sit with those who are better than? See, we've been taught, we've been trained to think that, oh, if I surround myself by such individuals, I will attract the same things that they have. I will attract the money. I will attract the fame. I will attract the people. I will attract this lifestyle. But if these individuals who you want to surround yourself with are proud, if they are prideful, the word of God says here, it is better to live humbly with the poor. Because if you surround yourself with those who are prideful, if you surround yourself with those who are proud, then you yourself may very well fall into the temptation of being prideful. You yourself may very well fall into the temptation of being proud. You will fall into the temptation of thinking that you are superior than, that you are better than. The Bible says it is better to sit humbly, to live humbly with the poor. Meaning, I don't need to sit with a multimillionaire. If they're prideful, if they're proud, if they think themselves better than, I don't want to sit with them. I don't want to be affiliated with them. Meaning, if I desire to be a leader, a CEO, a president, whatever, but if I think I got to hang around other CEOs or other presidents who think of themselves better than their own organization, better than God, higher than God himself, why would I want to be around such people? I'd rather sit with those who know who the King of Kings is, who the Lord of Lords is. I'd rather sit with those who know better than, who know that they are servants, who know that there is only one and true living God, who they will have to answer to someday, who they will have to confess their sins to someday, who they will have to bow down to someday. I'd rather sit with those who think of themselves lower than others. Why is that? It's because they will keep themselves humble. They, they are humble at heart. Be very careful that when, be very careful. I should even say be weary of certain rooms you walk into. Be weary of certain hotels you go into. Be wary of certain restaurants you go into. Be wary of certain shops, clothing stores, whatever it may be that you go into. You better ask God to keep you humble. Whether you're shopping at Walmart or you're shopping at Versace, you better be humble. Whether you're shopping at Louis Vuitton or whether you're shopping at, at Five Below, you better be humble. You better be humble. You better be humble. Pride leads to destruction. Pride results in disgrace. Pride results in humiliation. You better ask God to keep you humble. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 10. It says, pride leads to conflict. Those who take advice are wise. A prideful person thinks they know it all. A prideful person can't be taught. This right there tells you pride does not discriminate against age. It does not discriminate. It does not discriminate against your social status. It does not discriminate. It does not discriminate against your race. Pride leads to conflict. If you think you know it all because of how old you are, you're prideful. If you think you know it all because you're black or because you're white, you're prideful. If you think you know it all because you have a doctor's degree or you have an honorary degree, you're prideful. If you think you know it all, anytime you think you know it all, anytime you think, nope, I'm right, I will not give in, you may very well be prideful. Now, when I say I'm right, I will not give in. I'm not talking about giving in to sin. I'm talking about being humble. I'm talking about listening to someone, hearing one out. When you are prideful, it will lead to conflict. It will lead to arguments. But when you take advice, you're wise. When you have an ear to listen, you are living in wisdom. 
Last scripture for part one of destruction follows pride is Proverbs chapter 18, verse 12. And it says, haughtiness goes before destruction. Humil humility precedes honor. Haughtiness goes before destruction. Humility precedes honor. Haughtiness, what is that? When you think of yourself better than. Chest up, chest out, head up. Not wanting to help the poor. Not wanting to feed those who are hungry. Not wanting to clothe those who are naked. Not wanting to pray for those in need of prayer. You keep your head up. You keep on moving forward. You turn a blind eye to them. You act like you don't hear them. You act like you don't see them. Because you are haughty. Because you think you are better than. And that is a dangerous place to be in. That is a dangerous thing to do. Haughtiness goes before destruction. You walk around thinking you're superior. Yeah, it won't be too long before you fall. You walk around thinking you're better than. It won't be too long before you are destroyed. When, when you walk around humble, when you have a humble heart, it's only a matter of time before you're honored. It is only a matter of time before people truly respect you and people say, wow, they, we love this person's heart. Ladies and gentlemen, as I close out part one of Destruction Follows Pride, I simply want to say, remain humble. Remember, God always looks at the heart. He always looks at the heart. Be humble. Turn away from pride. Repent of your pride. Because right now, as we're in this pride month, it's not good. I pray that the U.S. repents before the U.S. is destroyed. Check out part two coming up next.